Spitzer Space Telescope. The Spitzer Space Telescope, formerly known as the Space Infrared Telescope Facility, SIRTF, was the third and, until the launch of the European Herschel Telescope in 2009, the largest infrared telescope ever. Launched in August 2003, it used its sharp infrared eyes to study the cosmos until May 2009, when its coolant ran out. After that, Spitzer operated in hot mode, meaning the instruments were no longer cooled to minus 271 degrees Celsius and the operating temperature was around minus 242 degrees Celsius. However, the telescope was not retired by NASA until January 2020 and its successor will be the James Webb Space Telescope. Cooling the instruments is so important for an infrared telescope to ensure that the inherent heat of the instruments does not disturb the recorded data, which is why the operating temperature must be close to absolute zero. It was also the fourth and last telescope in NASA's Great Observatories program, which also includes the Hubble Space Telescope, where each space telescope examines the universe in a very specific wavelength range. That the telescope could be realized at all is thanks to James Houck, 1940 to 2015, who spent the majority of his entire professional career from the mid-1970s onwards building support for funding the telescope. The actual mission duration was originally planned to be only two and a half years, but due to its great success, the mission was extended until the liquid helium was depleted. But even in hot mode, two observation channels of the infrared camera in the shortwave and near-infrared regions could still operate, and the mission was therefore continued as the Spitzer Warm mission. The telescope is named after the astrophysicist Lyman Spitzer, who promoted the idea of orbiting observatories in the 1940s. It was launched on a Delta II rocket and was the first spacecraft to use an Earth-trailing orbit. Communication with Earth was handled by NASA's Deep Space Network. The primary mirror had a diameter of 0.85 meters and was designed for wavelengths from 3 to 180 micrometers. The telescope system was based on the Richer Christian principle and was a true lightweight, weighing less than 950 kilograms. Almost all elements, with the exception of the mirror support structure, were made of lightweight beryllium, while the outer shell was made of aluminium. On the side facing away from the sun, it was painted black to radiate as much heat as possible while the sunny side was shiny to reflect sunlight instead of absorbing it. The Infrared Array Camera, IRAC, was one of three instruments on the Spitzer Space Telescope and was the only instrument that remained largely functional after its coolant was depleted. This camera operated in the near and mid-infrared range, more specifically in wavelengths from 3.6 to 8 micrometers. IRAC had four detectors, each tuned to very specific wavelengths and with a resolution of 256 by 256 pixels. The shorter wavelength detectors were made of indium and antimony, while the longer wavelength detectors were treated with arsenic. The only moving part of this instrument was the shutter, but it was not used in flight. The infrared spectrograph, IRS, on the other hand, was a high and low resolution spectroscope for mid-infrared wavelengths between 5 and 40 micrometers, similar to a prism. This spectrograph also split the incident light into its components. The instrument had four different modules and the detector array had 1 to 8 by 1 to 8 pixels. The multiband imaging photometer, MIPS, was a camera for the far infrared range for wavelengths of 24, 70 and 160 micrometers. In addition, this instrument could also operate as a simple spectrometer. This sensor array for the 24 micrometers had 128 by 128 pixels and was primarily made of silicon treated with arsenic, while the other two sensor arrays had only 32 by 32 and 2 by 20 pixels respectively and were made of germanium treated with gallium. There are a lot of false color images of the universe from Spitzer that have improved our understanding. Among other things, it's been able to detect two dust-free quasars at 12.7 billion light years, which are primordial black holes too young for detectable amounts of dust to have already formed around them. Furthermore, it was also able to catch a glimpse of the center of our Milky Way, which is obscured in visible light by interstellar dust. Spitzer's contribution to the study of exoplanets. 
Spitzer not only collected valuable data on protoplanetary disks, discovering how silicate crystals from around EX Lupi, but also provided data on the heat distribution of planet HD 80606b, which lies 190 light years away toward the constellation Ursa Major. It also discovered a lack of methane on the Neptune sized world GJ436b although planetary models actually assume that when temperatures are above 1,000 Kelvin and hydrogen, carbon and oxygen are present, this gas also occurs naturally. This is why Spitzer helped refine our understanding of exoplanets more than once. The discovery of water vapour on HD 189733b was also a scientific breakthrough that we owe to Spitzer's infrared eyes, as was the first map of an exoplanet's surface temperature. This infrared data was taken from the hot Jupiter HD 189733b, which rotates entirely in just 2.2 days bound around its star and is 63 light years away. While the bright side comes in at 930 degrees Celsius, the dark side is still 650 degrees Celsius. It also discovered five of the seven Earth sized planets in the TRAPPIST 1 planetary system, and these exoplanets are among the most interesting planets outside our solar system. More interesting, however, may be the discovery that cooler stars have a different mix of life-forming chemicals. Researchers, in fact, used Spitzer to examine planet-forming materials to detect different types of stars for prebiotic chemicals, specifically hydrogen cyanide, a component of adenines, which in turn is a basic element of DNA. The researchers found only about 30% of sun-like stars, but not around cooler dwarf stars, indicating that possible life on a planet around such a star would require different DNA building blocks than terrestrial life. Thank you for your attention. If you like this video, give us a like or write a comment and check out our other videos about space telescopes.